Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hey, 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 it's coffee break time, and I don't think I've seen you two since the last time we had a while. while. <laughs> It's just us three, and uh, look what kind of frame of mind we're in today. Summer. Summer. Summer is here. And it's officially. a hot day today, too. My God. Yeah. Yes. And we're supposed to be moving into a potential heat wave. 90 days, 90, 90 degrees, degrees, three days in a row means a heat wave. Exactly. That's right. So. School's out. Congrats. Last yeah. one graduated. Empty nest officially. Cheers. Hello. It's going to be fine. <laughs> Oh, no, it's fine, yeah. She had orientation for college this past week. Oh, yeah. Well, so, so, but exactly. I mean, yeah, it's summer. So you yeah. had a little taste of, I know you go back and forth to me, but you had a little taste the other day, uh, I saw. Yeah, well, here. I'm just a little romantic my, weekend, did you well, know? Well, I don't know, romantic weekend, but I mean, it was a couple <laughs> days away. You and your kids. hubby alone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a couple days away, and it's kind of funny. We, you know, we have this small condo up in Maine, and... I've been going up there for 30 years, and you think like, oh, okay, you're going to the same place. It seems like we usually find something different or of some course. sort of they, they, other place. I mean, I always want to go to the exact same beach. I want to go, I, I pretty much put my chair in the same spot. Exactly. We do the same thing. Love but, it. you know, then, you know, it's like, oh, okay. I just found out, like, you know, I'm probably going up tomorrow because I want to see this art gallery showing. Um, and gotten kind of connected with some different things. You know, this year we're going to do more with, like, a Gunkwood Playhouse and stuff. That's right. so. And you live on vacation. I don't live on vacation, but I have that house in the Cape. And yes. It's not that far away. I, yeah. I, it just takes me an hour and change to get there, so I right. often go down there lots. But, right. uh, yeah. but we have big plans this summer. Yeah. Going oh. to Italy. That's right. Oh my. So when do you go? What, so July or August? So July, mm -hmm. beginning of August, mm -hmm. doing um, a little tiny town that is my boyfriend's grandfather's birthplace mm -hmm. and they do this feast of saint anne so we're going to do that two of my kids are going to show up as well as his son his brother his sister oh. um, and then we're going to spend some time in florence so it's a big wow. deal wow that is I, a great big yeah so did you rent one big house so in florence we did mm -hmm. um the little town that his grandfather's from there's not really a hotel there and we're staying in another town that's only like seven miles away, but it takes a half hour because it's just all country. I mean, think really rural. Wow. And so, so we're we're a half hour away in a hotel for the uh, feast of Senia. But I've That's already wonderful. been. So it's really funny. I don't speak Italian, and we met cousins of his, but they don't speak English. So she and I communicate. We can um, text each other. But then you have to take the text and copy and paste right. it into the translator. Yeah, the so we're going back and forth that way. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Yeah. But the family theme, yeah, and I'm yeah. leaving for And you're going to the going. vineyard for our annual, you know, family throwdown. But, yeah. uh, you know, it is like relocating. I mean, we go for several weeks and, all, you know, my, my kids, though, as young adults, they get their own house <laughs> nearby. And so they'll, they're there now, with their the friends. Is this the first time they've done this, or they've this, done this before? This is, no, they've done it before. Okay. Um, and they're getting a different house this time, different mix of couples, yeah. you know. Um, my son and daughter will be with, with me, and, um, you know, so and then my brother and sister are coming, you How know, for, fun. for some time in there. So can't wait, just to, you know, and my, you know, it's been nice, you know, like everyone's doing as we get ready to celebrate summer, busy at work. But it's starting to just like, okay, I don't think I'm going to have to do much while I'm away. Well, I it's find great. that while I have enough to do, yeah, I don't have as many meetings and phone calls. So I can do things remotely. Right, so right. So I cannot take the trek into Boston and yeah. do all that, which is nice. You're really swamped nice. up there the, these um, days. A little bit busy. I mean, we just got off a very busy week because it was a week of... Uh, a fundraiser, so I mean that was the reason to get away for a couple of days and, afterwards. And remind people again where you are and what you do, because I yeah. think it's so cool. No, we just, should we should do I a little round so table about that. We're so engrossed in our yeah. work. I'm, I do community outreach and membership for a public radio station, Worcester. It's a primarily jazz station. It's an NPR station. Yeah, and you have and the best guests. You get so many cool people on your show. We get we get some neat people come in, music, different musicians, uh, and also kind of public figures. So like Jim McGovern's been in, the mayor of Worcester's been in, mm -hmm. um, 
Tim Murray, who used to be lieutenant mm -hmm. governor, but he's now mm -hmm. uh, president of the Greater Worcester Chamber of Commerce. Um, but you get you get performers. You we get, get performers, artists. and actually, mm -hmm. the last week was a um, kind of the I think it's the second Front Street concert of the season. But um, mm -hmm. she had someone called Jimmy Venino there, right. who is um, also the band leader for Conan O'Brien, and he has a pretty legendary blues band. Um, and so he was at our station in the afternoon. I invited him out, and. He was supposed to come out for like a 10, 15 minute interview and 90 minutes later he's still there and he's in, you know, like he's in like a conference <laughs> eating sandwiches, moving around, <laughs> telling all sorts of stories with people. So, I mean, <coughs> it was good. Um, it's different. Um, Excellent. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a lot of people on holiday now, so I'm like running from here right back out there because there's no one else to open the door for an intern who's driving yep. over an hour away. Yeah. But the, um, I think it's, you know, we're going into the fourth week, so a lot of people are on holiday. Yeah. Well, the fourth in town, we have also it's farmers market has started. Concerts yeah. on the common have started. Um, that horrible parade on July fourth. If you the, haven't seen it, at least go. You know. Yeah, you got to check out the horrible parade. <laughs> it's always it's fun. horrible. <laughs> and then there's the boat parade on Lake Maspinac. That's, That's fun. Uh, new that day. Um, yeah. There is oh um, so this past week was the kickoff of. The movies on the common. Oh yeah, they did that. And, and that'll you know check um, check the calendar. Yeah, they're, they're coming they, up throughout the summer, so just stuff. Yeah, the best place to check the calendar for things on the common is the Parks and Rec site. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, you know they they have jurisdiction of the common, so all the movies on the common, all the concerts on the common, um, they arrange them, they plan yeah. them, they staff them, um, and it's a lot of work. Um, their big focus is this whole, is the summer for. Right the common <coughs> you know uh, the common is one of my favorite places to take a break and I've been doing that more and more I'm just drawn just to, to it just, literally if I'll, I'll be you know running some errands when I'm in town I will if I grab a sandwich a beautiful day I will park on the side of the, of the common and sit there but I, you know and I see it all the time but I take pictures of this vibrant green grass I am so appreciative of Park and Rex for how they oh. keep that common up it's immaculate. It, the grass is lush. But it didn't used to be that way. No. It, it is really beautiful. I, kudos to them because yes. it used to be a little bit like, oh, come on. This is our common. Now yeah. it's like, oh, this is it our common. It is a treat. You just want to go it's there and lay down. beautiful. So I'm always surprised, when, despite the signs, that there are puppies sometimes on the common, you know. Yeah. And I, you know, like maybe one person or something. And I just hope it doesn't, you know, people don't abuse that because it is an immaculate, wonderful, well, place. so that. That's comfortable a place good everybody. segue. <clears throat> there is a move afoot to get a dog park in town, and mm -hmm. there's a petition, and we really need signatures. Um, we do need a dog yeah. park. We do need a place for puppies to go and play. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of dog owners in town. You know, I'm a dog owner. I'm very fortunate. Uh, my dog's a little more senior, and I have a big backyard, and, and it's perfect Which you for think her. everybody in Hopkinton does, but, but or not most everybody. people do. And, and the other piece is that you want your dogs to be social. Right. You want your dog to get along with other dogs, and so you need a place to be able to take them mm -hmm. to socialize them, to allow them to interact with other dogs. And in so many other towns, there are dog parks. So please, 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 well, please. Well, you know please. there's pros and cons. My dog had, no, there, there, get a dog park and I'm saying in a good are, location yeah. just just put it out there that there are pros and cons about the dog park but with the, those oh. who want it they need signatures you need the signatures yeah. but I but I say if it's done right there's it really becomes a benefit to the community oh yeah 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 so uh, get on there get out there if you want then, it. well <laughs> then you don't have people coming to the common that's or right. the well, trails yeah. <laughs> right You're, you can walk your dogs in the trails but a lot of people leave them off lease in the trails because yeah. they want their dog to run well what are you about to say here? A dog park. <laughs> yes ma'am well i mean a lot of i talk about sorry, a lot of the history, i'm obviously pro dog <laughs> a lot of the history of why dog parks were created were not as much for the dog the dogs at all huh? it was actually so that owners could interact and people yeah. could actually and for people to mingle, um, our closest one is actually in Medway. I mean, I'm for it. I don't understand some of the aspects of it, like how do you know a dog will get along with another dog, things like that. Be, you, you know, dog until fights. You, well, yeah, ah, no, but you have rules. It. There are rules. Right. Well, you know. The, right. But until you're there. Dogs don't follow rules. You know, people but, have to follow the rules. The, um, <laughs> but I do think it's an enhancement in the town that is needed where, you know, there are some, there isn't even an abutting town that has one. Mm -hmm. But I think... When I looked at um, 
a new development that's coming up on the other side of Legacy Farms, that heritage development, mm -hmm. it's in over 55. Mm. One of the um, entitlements they're building for as part of their HOA is a dog park that is just for their oh, nice. owners. Just for that. That's very and, nice. and, and part of that theory is is that it's the it's the not socializing the, the for social interaction of the owners. residents. Yeah. Um, and less uh, less about the dogs, to be honest with you. That it and how they started off these dog parks was in urban settings. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that you know people just didn't see each other. They'd walk by on the street, things like that. But when like your dogs are out playing and you're sitting on a bench and someone's sitting this close to you, you end up saying hi well, and hello. Playgrounds for friends. dogs. Talk about yeah. Your dog. yeah. yeah. Well, cool. and, and, but it's, it, I would say being a dog owner, it, yes, socialization of you, but I find it really important if you're a responsible dog owner, it's really important to have, you know, it, it, to give your dog certain dog. levels of interaction. Um, That's the new way. So, yeah. <laughs> but we have two big dogs, and Michael takes them out to a place in Marlboro. Mm -hmm. um, and part of it is a social interaction for the dogs where, like, he actually goes with another co-worker, and she brings two or three sure. couple dogs. And, um, but it's also a chance for him to walk around and talk to another adult. Yeah, but yeah. it's not an official dog park. It just happens to be a space like, that yeah. you can take your dogs to. And I well, always so like I'm the only person in town that doesn't have a dog. Well, you it's know. okay. It is okay. I'm fine with it, but it's funny, you know. Yeah. In terms of funny anyway. people who want a dog park, I'm sure there's a zillion. My high horse. Yeah. Yeah. Sign the petition. I, I just think a dog park would, would. But I think the petition's important just to at least engage the community and say, listen, mm -hmm. we, we voted on this several years ago. We've engaged some money toward this. Um, at least let's, like, get it, get it put forward and find the right spot What's for it. Your opinion? Maybe yeah. the original spot isn't the right spot, but let's find the right spot. Oh, there's a foundation that's putting a grant forward for it. Right. Well, so it's not a huge cost of the tax. And there's a place to opine and say, you know, what are your concerns and whatever. So you should get on. And that's right. Just get involved because that that that's and happening. That. Absolutely. So anyway, sorry, great segue. <laughs> well, there also, and, and uh, other people in town know more about these details, but um, there is some land on Main Street um, between, you know, Western Nurseries and town going towards, coming towards town yeah. that, um, you know, was apparently bequeathed to the town. And, you know, there's some thoughts about a marathon museum going there. Yes. And, um, you know, there is some hope possibly that uh, a YMCA could go there for Hopkinton. Now, but, you know, it may be a long shot or, you know, a pipe dream. So but, explain but, that further, because we have the Y, but this is an expansion, a different... No, but we, yeah, exactly. Happy to, to explain it. And, and, you know, full disclosure, I'm on the board of the Metro West Y, and, um, you know, the, there's a Hopkinton out, Outdoor Center, which is wonderful, which is not going away, which provides camps and... and um, th in fact, the interesting thing about the Outdoor Center segue, a cricket club has begun thanks to math work. Not the it, it, no, cricket, cricket is in the, the, the like the, the sport. baseball sport. The, the, sport. The, the Indian sport that's so popular with with Brits and with, um, yeah. with Indians and um, the Asia, why very... to support the Indian community with the um, help of math work with a big grant have created a beautiful cricket field at the outdoor center. How cool! That you know, I also... actually went to camp there. Yeah, well, yeah, my kids, you did, you're young enough. No, to, no, I went to camp yeah, I went oh. to Hopkinton Outdoor Rec Center. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my kids used to go there. But anyway, what the hope is, because of the growing population in Metro West, the Metro West Y, based at Framingham, wants to, and Ashland and Hopkinton to some extent, want to bring a full Y closer to, so closer here. And, uh, like, like the similar to the Framingham oh, no. facility. Well, I, I would say no, no, it's a state lot of the art. This would be a flagship center. Okay, uh, state and, of the art. And if full uh, amenities, pool, you know, community workout. workout. I mean, it would be okay, for the community. And we have an opportunity. It will either be in Ashland is very interested in having this, and you know, some of us in Hopkinton are at least putting people to know that interesting. It could be here, possibly if, cool. if they could find if, a place. If I mean, if you want to visualize what a Y can be in the community. Mm -hmm. Look up what the Marblehead Y has done. Really? And so the Marblehead Y has become the flagship Y, and it got you know two very major donors involved. Um, cool. The third floor houses the Boston Ballet. It yeah. it has indoor outdoor pools. That's it has right. a, but it's it's beyond you know, and it's beyond where people are thinking that. It's, Just bring it's your kids for swimming lessons. But it's it, yeah, yeah, but or or working out. It's you know preschools are in there. It's um, elderly. Um, 
like well, walking the, centers and things like that, uh, it's actually the, a very much yeah. of a health resource from cradle to grave. Cool. Well, the why, you know, mission is obviously youth development in sports, wellness, and um, early education. And so that's sort of their pillars, and these sorts of programs would be there. But the why is more than a place. That's just, you know, but we do, you know, to have a family facility um, is what the goal is. And, you know, we're hoping, I mean, I think there's a, some light that needs to be shed on this. That. And there are some donors who are trying to look at this and go, we want one closer to the West here, you know. Right. And um, there are a lot cool. of people who grew up with Ys. Right. Who Most people have choose, a Y story. Who will choose a Y versus a country club in some ways because. Right. Well, affordability would be one. Well, I mean, even on the donor level, they choose it because of the expanse of services. Mm -hmm. They're not looking for something that might have a restaurant or a bar or a golf course, but something that is mm -hmm. that they can bring their entire extended family, they can feel as part of them. Right. They might have an arts program in one room, but they may have a yoga room. And, and did else. you know, if you're a member of the Y, you can go to any Y in the United States. In the world. In, 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 the, in the world, in yes, the world. it's global. Which is so cool. And when you join the Y, you really join a mission of service and giving to the community. And that is very different than joining a country club. Nothing's yeah. wrong with country clubs and other sorts of clubs. But the Y is wonderful, and I'm really um, learning a lot and have been um, Really enjoyed working with them. Yeah, uh, over you got the past to do like a quick years. trip to Chicago recently, right? Yeah, I went to uh, you know with uh, board members and, and CEOs, and there's some wonderful learning. And, and just real quick, because I, I updated the, the board a little bit about this, just some interesting trends. The why is very forward thinking and looking at de uh, demographic trends around um, what's going on with youth. And the biggest takeaway for me is um, the description of the kids young people who are age 22 and younger, 22 years old Gen right now. Z. What, they, what, the, what this futurist says, you know, we need, we need to give him more credit than calling him Gen Z. He calls them the change makers. Yeah. The first generation I, of digital natives, the first generation of kids who really will be thinking and operating differently than any generation really since the 60s, who were the right. real, you know, radical change yep. agents. I think, I think this, very this on generation, point. watch out, they're, they're amazing. They're yeah. smart, they're um, Engaged. passionate yep. about what's important to them, yep. right. and so forth. So the why is thinking about that in terms of that. Yeah, that's very I know, cool. it's really, yeah, so it's fun. So let's take a step. We had Darlene yes. talk about her business a little yes. bit. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit about your business, uh, just to refresh no, people. No, you're not, we, yes, so um, I am founder of Decision Insight, um, an organizational development, transition management, executive search firm. Um, I work with private and public sector, but primarily the, the public sector. Um, so by, like, you know, what I'm really thrilled about, we're able to go on vacation. So we successfully placed the um, top HR person at the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. She starts on Monday. And um, you've worked with, you do a lot of work with boards. You do yes. a lot of work with HR departments. You well, do a lot of work with um, which just sort of the uh, tone at the top the, and, and, and. We're hired by um, boards, change management. board of directors, um, or senior management teams. Um, and really, it's really organizational coaching and executive coaching, being that um, partner with them to sort out the initiatives that they want to do based on their vision, mission, strategic plans. So there's some HR in there, but usually I work with organizations yeah. that have HR. But just um, so sort of the broad strategies, assessment, um, executive coaching, and if there's a search in there, then we're right there with it. Plus, we're very fortunate you were appointed again to the towns. Oh, yeah. So uh, Kathy LaFlash and I are pleased to be reappointed by the board to serve on the personnel committee. I presently serve as chair. We've got a great committee um, of HR professionals and an attorney. Um, Kurt Morrison is the attorney. Jerry Marshall. Gary Marshall, excuse Gary me. Russell. Uh, Gary Russell. Oh, God. Yeah. So <laughs> I think Gary Russell's a, a really good producer, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Like, I'm terrible with my field, I'm bad with names. Um, who is a you know, dynamite recruiter, uh, Patricia hunt Cynical, who is an HR professional as well. Great team. Yeah, it's a great team. We have a good time. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. And Ms. Connie, Ms. Finance, the recovering CPA, you always say. Okay, I'm a recovering CPA. Well, so my um, business partner and I have a professional services firm, and we primarily do the work at startups and emerging. So we're in the tech and life mm -hmm. science community and we're their back office, we're their CFO controller and staff. Right. And we've grown incredibly in the last six, nine months. Uh, we're now 45 professionals. Wow. Um, not all full time. Uh, and we're a great place for 
uh, young parents who want to work part-time, mm -hmm. kind of keep involved in their professional world, and at the same time be able to be available to raise their children. Right. Um, but we are the back office, and we have a bunch of CPAs and technical yeah. people and tax. Well, just, that's the new, that's and an emerging model. Of, we of, go out to the clients, but we yeah. had that virtual aspect that you, you know, can also work virtually. Um, and then we do a lot of fun. My favorite part, which mm -hmm. I do, is I help raise capital. I help them with their business plans. Mm -hmm. I help them coach on the business, you know, on the direction of the business plan. They have an idea, and you have to help them bring that idea to that's market. Right. And and it's a process because I've learned, first of all, you have to figure out what their goals are, not your mm -hmm. goals. So I do a lot of vicarious living. And I've seen a lot of <laughs> coaches. And again, it's their goals, not yours. So you have to learn to ask open-ended questions. Absolutely. And the questions you ask can help direct them mm -hmm. to where they need to be. So you do it in the finance world, I do it in the human capital yeah. arena, and you are mover and shaker out there with, you know, you're yeah. mostly you connect the dots. And, yeah. Yeah. But you know, and, and I had the pleasure of um, you inviting me to be on your show and read some of the, the funding scripts, but yeah. um, I mean, you really are making a big difference right away in, uh. in terms of the um, impact that you've had as a marketing professional, as a Absolutely. development person. Yes. I know it's membership. But you connect all those dots oh to, bring, to bring attention to that radio station. And, you know, I became a member. I wouldn't know if I didn't work for you. Yeah. Well, no, you've elevated it. And that's why I, I earlier was like, tell people what you do. Yeah. Because <laughs> you really, and, and I've always been impressed with, I, I like, I'm Drew Barrymore, 51st States. I forget names. I forget people. You know, how I've done my profession, I have no clue. You remember people, you have That's connections, true. you build connections, you add value to relationships by building Thanks. those connections. You do. And I just like, you know, so. know. right in the middle of stuff, yeah. you know, that spoke yeah. in the yeah. wheel kind of thing. Yeah. Which is so, a, yeah. Which is cool beans. Cool Keeps beans. you busy, because yeah. we haven't seen each other literally since the last time we so saw Oh my gosh. <laughs> you were used to, so, I gotta tell you, when things were a little slower for all of us, we would like, like hang out. out. We would have not hung, hung out. out. <laughs> right. I know. So it was funny. as like we're talking about like summer vacations and things like that. I always keep thinking about like you know, I've, I've been watching um, Sydney Altamira dog or on her like. Oh road my god! And things like yeah. that. And I'm road about trip across the U.S. Different road trips we did as kids, and ours were very much kind of like what I say now that we do the same thing over and over again. We went to Maryland four times a year, so from there that we would go someplace else. But um, like you guys had more than two kids in your family. So I'm going to guarantee your no, parents. She is, oh, oh, growing, growing up. Growing up. Growing up. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to guarantee you, your parents had station wagons, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, didn't have, we had a station wagon once for three years. And that was it. After that, it was always piling in two separate cars, oh, doing whatever. So, yeah. It we was were, hilarious. We were always <laughs> jealous of the station wagon family. Oh, we loved, they would I drive, loved station wagon. Because wagons. we never had one. My father didn't think they were cool. There was only two kids and a <laughs> right, dog right. when we would travel. But I think I begged and begged wanting one. So my dad had created like this piece of plywood to go across the back seat oh, so God. you could stretch out like a yeah. because at that point you also didn't use a safety belt so you could no. just flop around. Oh, so and you needed a station wagon for the drive in too. That was another and fun like thing you know to do. and then my cousins had that station wagon where like it had the third seat that actually looked out the back oh, yeah. so window. Yeah. Yeah. So let me tell you and I, I threw up out the back window once yeah, that, yeah. That, no, that was the funniest thing. I was the motion sick kid. But being the young, second to the youngest out of five kids, so seven people in a station wagon, guess where the youngest two got stuck? In, in the way, way back. back. In the way back. And it didn't have a seat. You were like around, rolling around in the back. And there were no windows in the back. <laughs> it was not a pretty sight. So you coveted it? I dreaded You're it. You're in the wrong vehicle. No, I was like, I so <laughs> wanted to be in that, anywhere in the back middle seat. But they were the bench seats then. Oh, my God. And now we, you know, now we don't have one. But, like, as soon as we started having kids, that's all I wanted was a station wagon. Yeah. So we had, like, the Volvo wagons minivan. for a while. Oh, no, I hated the minivan. The minivan sucks. I, I had the but, minivan. But we, um, yeah, they're corny looking. But when you're in them and on a road trip, you know, when like great. When we're driving up and back and forth <laughs> the Maine or you're going back and forth the Cape and stuff. Yeah. I, I still get a kick. I'll look, look at, like, I mean, people have taken pictures when we used to leave 
for the because um, we oh, used to be gone for three weeks. Cart. Everything on top and all yeah. the bicycles in the back, right, everything like right. that. That's that you look right. like the Griswolds. That's right. Out. I mean, it's like the really really <laughs> show. Yeah. But now it's like you know, Michael. We're like, oh my God, remember when we were like that? But now it's like we're the ones that have uh, you know a couple cars going up and people coming up in ships and back and forth. So you know, yeah. we don't do it as much anymore. In fact, I'm hoping we'll do it in a year or two. But we used to go like every two or three years down to the Outer Banks, and we would take the SUV, we'd have the big thing on top, and with all packed with all our beach gear, everybody in the car, and the dog, and we would haul our tushies all the way down to the Outer Banks, and and we were that family. It was like, <laughs> well, we, we, I'll be doing that tomorrow. <laughs> Just we, we, were the, we, we were that family <laughs> for many years, and we're still like come, come somewhat that yeah. family when we go up, but um, I mean, I think it's just kind of neat to see the dynamic and the energy that happens yep, this I time know. of year, yep. and people excited about vacation, and, um, and all that good family time, doing yeah. fun stuff, you know, you know and yeah, summertime. So summertime. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's um, the July Fourth coming up, and Constant the Common Farmers Market. Um, and so hopefully we'll see more of each other. I and hope we'll so. See yes. Everybody else summer time. over this summer. Cheers, Have a great summer guys. Have a great one. We'll see yeah. you soon. Cheers. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose, and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of Naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal Naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining Naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkey see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen drivers surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving because if you do it, your child will too.